Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 17, Week 7. Block and Shatter, White Joel Birch Team, taking on Blade Fury Burgers, the Wizard Team. Last game, Blade Fury Burgers would have won had Lambert not been on the worst imaginable hero. Let's see what happens this time. You know, I hate to say draft issue, but like. It did feel like, like, if Lambert is just like Faceless Void that game, if everything else is the same, and he had last pick, mind you, they couldn't have changed anything. If, uh, if the exact same game happens and Lambert is on the Faceless Void, they just win, right? Like, surely. Team back. Who is he grabbing? And what are they getting damage on him with from outside the chrono? Just a gyro? Yeah, just a gyro. Well, that's on his team. So, the uh, the actual answer is he can throw Macropire into it. That's and like if Timberstone's not inside, he can throw Ult into it, and that's very scary for a very short time. And that's it. Right, right. It's worse for him than good for him. I think to have that chrono. I don't think he, that would have made a difference. Dire team back. No Ember Ban. No, they're letting it through this time. Well, maybe, anyway. This time instead, they're respect banning the timber saw. So. Five seconds remaining. Dire team back. And the Brewmaster, who didn't really feel like he had a very big impact on that last game outside of one kill at mid on ice. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So a bit awkward. I mean, had good items, but like that, yeah, you know, a, a a jungle creep, a melee creep with that that set of items would have been able to say the same. See so you know how that goes. Oh, they're going to be in blade uh, banning the Ember Spirit after all on Blade Fury Burgers. Ten seconds remaining. That's uh, Blade Fury Burgers' Five biggest ban. Remaining. But God. For the most part, Block of Cheddar banning the same stuff here. A bad pick or what? I don't really think that either of the uh, the good heroes into a bad are going to be things that Blade Fury Burgers are picking up. Ten seconds remaining. I don't think Ramanolo is a uh, is a. Uh, I mean, I guess you could see the Lambert Arc Warden. He's a large hero. I don't see, I don't see Ramanolo as a dark seer expert, however. You just cast, you just put the spikes on everything. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, there you go. You put the spikes on everything. I didn't know that dark yeah. seer was carrying around caltrops. <laughs> Are you sure you're not thinking of techies? Because they have spikes on their minds. You know, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, you know, it's kind of weird. There are many, many, many landmines throughout history. But for some reason, they decided to model the techies mines after, like, naval mines. It's kind of weird. Block of Cheddar trying to make this not a hero happen. Hey, in fairness, Tiny hasn't been on the upswing recently, just basically completely around uh, Conda builds. Because, you know, you can uh, tree throw with Conda, and that does uh, that does quite a bit of damage and all that. Really, it's better if you have the tree in your hand and you toss, but you know how it goes. Is it worth it with the cool... I mean, <laughs> it's not like he spams. On one hand, that's true. On the other hand, it has like it's it's getting picked a lot and has like a sixty percent win rate in pro games. There's got to be something to it. Bringing out the Viper next. I hate. Oh man, I cannot tell you how much I hate seeing Viper this early on the pick board. Pages, I got a question for you. Ready? What's big green and does no damage? Ten seconds remaining. It's not ten seconds remaining. A friendly pair? I don't know. Viper, when he's silenced. Radiant what's big green and dies in two seconds? 
What? Viper when he's broken. What's big green and also dies in two seconds? I don't know. Viper into high alpha fizz damage. Five seconds remaining. What's big green and absolutely useless entirely? Venom answer. That's not very nice. I was going to say Viper against uh, Diffusal Blade users, or... Well, not anti mage so much. You can actually kind of own anti mage secretly, but like PL or something like that, for example. Or a sniper, for example. Which this team has had no qualms about picking up before. Dire team pick. Basically, what I'm getting at is that there are many, many ways to counter out this Viper guy. He is very easy to get rid of. In fairness, that is one of the better options, they just snatch it up themselves. It is very, very easy to get rid of this Viper hero, and picking him up very early like this is super risky, because it's not like you can make him like a support. Like, support Viper never worked. Even when people were doing it, it didn't work. Ten seconds remaining. It's not like you can scuttle the pick. Somebody is going to have Five not a game if you do this. Let's see how fast they can make that happen. At least they banned out the DP, which is one of the absolute worst Viper doesn't have a game heroes. Like, how about a guy who can silence you, who has a lot of fizz damage that you can't do anything about, and who's faster than you? That's 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 pretty rough for the guy, all things considered. Radiant team pick. Undying, undying doesn't really do it, but Undying's job isn't really to do that. Has an interesting little matchup with Spirit Breaker in the support line, and that Spirit Breaker really, like, Undying can't ever really kill the Spirit Breaker, but Undying can very easily set up a scenario where Spirit Breaker has to not intervene or else he dies. Juggernaut into the new Viper is a little worrying, because if he ults you, I believe that just completely ruins your own ult, basically, and he can do that through spin. The good news is, is that if he doesn't Viper Strike you one way or the other, then uh, you just cut him to ribbons, and he can't do anything about it. Five seconds remaining. But a uh, pro tip: Magic immunity cores in a viper is not how you deal with them. They he he doesn't really care about your magic immunity anymore. Sorry to say. Now before before it was, yeah, still pretty bad, honestly, because he can still viper strike through it. But at least the viper strike through just did you know, a little bit of damage and slow, it didn't break ya. Definitely would like to see some CC action on the uh, Block of Cheddar lineup here. Come out sooner than later. Like, big CC action. We're not, we're not talking some little, uh, some little, like, lich, lich sinister gaze type stuff. We're talking, like, get, give me an ice bath or a black hole or something, you know? They are, uh, almost out of reserve time <laughs> on the Blade Fury Breakers. <laughs> They had to think that hard to pick Lion? I'm surprised somebody was willing to run the Lion in this game. This is like a nightmare Lion game so far. Like who who would who 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 do you most want to lane against? Is it A, the guy who hits Q and ignores everything you do? B, the guy who just you know, constantly steals all your HP and drops a tombstone which you can't deal with on your head. Or C, the guy who one-shots you for, like, half the game. He can't drop a tombstone, he doesn't have mana. Hey, that's true! Unfortunately, he can have mana if he has mangoes. Or the lotus. Ten 
Ten seconds remaining. Which, hey, you know, you still have to think to do that, but, uh... I don't think they got a lot of Lotus last game. Remaining. Well, we'll see if things change here. Enchantress coming up. Uh, Chantress passive does not Radiant interact team. with the Omni Slash, really. So I'm not really sure what that's about. The Rubik's coming out. That's kind of the wimpy CC I was talking about, but at least he can steal from Lion Espy to, uh, to get some longer mm -hmm. ones. And it's just another throw, so they want to be really funny. They can throw somebody on the enemy team, like, really far. Like, you can toss them back into your own line, and then you could just have Rubik toss them even further back. Send a guy halfway across the map, going downtown, baby. Or if you have, like, a bad toss, you can just throw him right back away. Like, you just, uh, you just throw Viper right into Juggernaut's face, and you're like, whoops, and throw him away. No Ricky, by the way. No Ricky, no Puck. Ten seconds remaining. I'm getting at it in the LD2L Discord server. Let's read out who, whatever this comment is live on the air, shall we? It's in the suggestions thread. Oh, it's from uh, Shone, actually, funnily enough. Uh... I told him, blame Randy, and he replied to that, and he said, thumbs up. Okay, so, uh, so shoutouts to you. Radiant team pick. So there you go. No D either. Once again, saving Joel for last year. Remaining. Five Except that's not what they did remaining. last time. They just looked like they were going to be doing that. It was secretly actually Dusty. Actually, why are they banning Joel Heroes? He's probably on the tiny, right? They haven't really given him a good reason not to be. Outside of the Viper in particular. Yeah, like tiny to Viper sucks, but like not badly enough, I wouldn't still run it. Dire team pick. Oh, okay, there we go. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. And then we're coming up here. I don't know how much I like the Enigma into not seeing the enemy P1, but... They're going to pick Luna into it. Okay. Uh, Peaches. Peaches. Uh-huh. What's up? Peaches, did they just pick Luna and a Juggernaut? Lambert? <laughs> Lambert Period. doesn't know what the hell he's doing <laughs> with his own picks. What the hell is this nonsense? That's a dreadful matchup for Luna. There's no two ways about it. It's good into the Undying. That's the good news. Not going to be laning against the Undying. That's the bad news. It's also going to be a mid Rubik. Okay. Interesting. Fascinating. I feel like that's... Well, worse than the mid-tiny here would have been, but you do you. And if you did that just because you were worried about Viper owning you, well, A, Viper isn't even there, and B, he's going to own that anyway. And C, Spear Breaker, well, isn't going to do anything. He, d he doesn't win mid, but you know. What an, what an odd scenario in general. Once again, I'm just going to add He's the favor of the block this time. What? He's not bored this time. Yet. That's true. It's taken at least this long. But, um... Yeah, the... Again, even with the pretty awkward mid-Rubik, it's a little hard to see him doing much in a game that looks like this. Even with the awkward mid-Rubik, I just still have to give this to Block and Shatter, just because this one matchup is just unplayable for Luna. Like... Probably, I, I would not be surprised if this had like a 40% win rate for her. It is dreadful. It's pretty dreadful, and she's laying against a tiny, which I mean, like... The Rubik going mid is a little awkward, but like... This tiny Enigma lane should absolutely own. Like, last time, it was Lambert pretty well in control of his own safe lane. This time, he is, uh... He's gonna be praying. 
you know, he'll be able to clean up the Enigmites, that's the good, that's the good news. But, uh, being Avalanche Tossed on top of the Midnight Pulse is gonna be like 89% of his HP. He is not exactly the most resilient core. See, You might be thinking about laning against the safe lane, which wouldn't be that bad of an idea. And slop wouldn't be unthinkable. Nope. He's unthought about it. Never mind. So yeah, he's still in uh he's still in Shit City. Do you know who founded Shit City? It's actually a major history question. He'll be on the test. Oh my god. Tiny, just level your Q. No. He you tossed to the guy who isn't leveling any of his abilities, so he's gonna no, he leveled his... He leveled his E! No, that's cringe. So... Rubik, who is their mid, gets first blood. He doesn't say a first blood line for some reason. Oh, I just realized! Hey, Coffee Cat, good news. No terrain this time. Just for you, buddy. Anyway. Um... Rubik is gonna get first blood, so their mid gets first blood on... <laughs> The other mid. Is it the terrain or the weather? <laughs> he he hates both, I think. He Well, he originally was like, please turn off the weather, but I'm like 70% sure what he meant was terrain. Because I don't think I had weather on in the clip he was talking about. Piper's probably going to do good against Jug for a while in this lane, and spike at 6. But those like that like level three, four, and five range is gonna be pretty tough for him, especially against the sun dying. Especially against oh. a good undying. I mean. oh. oh, look at all that HP. Uh, look at that overcommitment to sitting here and beating this person up. Would have been awesome if he had uh, gotten that big decay and then just walked back to the where the juggernaut was. But what can he do? It's level two. My Luna has W. This is gonna be a long lane. So far, mostly Rubik and Spirit Breaker just trading farm with each other here. Not really contesting in any serious way. Ice is. A little low, but he's not really in danger yet. Unless he lets himself get beat up a bunch more anyway. 10 GP Lumbridge GF. Do you even want a 10 GP Lumbridge GF? Be honest with yourself, man. It's like, uh... That, at that point, you might as well just pretend to be uh, with one of those little NPCs, right? The, 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 the ones you can... The, like, the... Like woman NPCs that just drop three gold when you kill them, and have stupid dialogue lines that don't mean anything. Pages doesn't get it. It's okay. We won't judge you too much for it, Pages. I mean, you're pretending either way. That's true. That is true. Goodbye, DJ Curry Spice. There's a fine line between... I'm not even going to go back for it. Here, here's what happened. Are you ready? Uh, Ramanolo, you maniac! Nobody cares, though. Okay. Ramanolo definitely should have died for that. They just weren't really uh, ministering their tombstone very well. Wizard gets a little too close to the sun here and just goes down in very short order. And then... Uh, Calls for healing. Hey, Lion got the Lotus, so there you go. Undying is not going to get the Lotus. Yeah, they didn't get the last match. It's interesting, they did, uh... It was a little surprising, I did think the Lion and the Undying weren't even going to be landing against each other. Nope. DJ Curry Spice on the Lion, for once. Wanted to add some spice to his life. <laughs> Why aren't you laughing? Oh, my lion. Oh, my lion. 
Oh, my lion. Going down. I'm not sure exactly what Sean just did, but apparently it was pretty tip worthy. Let's see, kind of in the middle of all the fun here. Just one avalanche is going to be all it really takes. Sean tries what? to throw the uh, the Luna in, throws the Enchantress in instead. There's a lot of. I thought Spirit Breaker was about to get involved in that. Oh my god, he has 200 HP, so we better not. It's starting to get kind of owned here. Down 10 last hits for the Nice. Bonk. That's the only bash he's gonna get this game. Kind of an awkward go here, but. Ramanolo, okay. Did realize uh, what was coming if he stayed. Jug, use your W, my man. Jug, if Ramanolo walks forward to kill your W, he dies. Oh. <laughs> playing this lane against. Playing this lane where he's a. Undying, a little awkwardly defensively, you know. Wizard uh, thought it was a great idea to tower dive here. The answer was that it was not. I forgot what side he was on. It's true. There we go, that's the aggression I would expect out of a jug on dying lane. The bad news is is that the tombstone did go down here, but the good news is it's gonna be a double kill for Coffee Cat anyway. Kinda of what I was talking about earlier, like, Viper is gonna spike when he hits 6, if he hits 6 at this rate. Viper is gonna spike when he hits 6, but until then he is just fodder for Juggernaut, basically. Like, at this point, just the combination of the, uh... Huh? Combination of is the White Joel Birch. Two, three tombstones now? So. I just have a charging contest at mid. And uh, <laughs> Rubik loses. That perked me up a bit. Shown uh, showing up here to watch. This is an ugly tiny set, Shown. I'm sorry, bro. Out here looking like uh... he is the moon. It's true. Out here looking like a Disney villain with that Shown. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pete moment. Hey, remember that scene in the Goofy movie of Pete at the hot tub? No. Good. Don't. <laughs> if you value your sanity, keep forgetting it. Ramanolo is in trouble again, just getting beat down by the supports here. Coffee Cat's like, I am the Dragonaut. I want to get an assist, but I realize now, I never will. Actually, Tiny dies for this, it's a little sad. Joel, you fuck! That wasn't very nice. <laughs> Coffee Cat came all the way out of lane to get that kill, and I guess he did too, he should now. <laughs> what a dick, that's a typical anti mage teamfight contribution right there. I hear a TP, Tiny's here. There's literally nobody else, so oh hi wizard. My sprites are with us. Oh my god, he has charge! <laughs> Bonk! Oh, here comes the other charge. Here comes a toss too. Oh my jewel! Wow, getting buried over here. I'm starting to think this mid Rubik thing is might not have been the greatest idea. Is this Dota or volleyball? Great question. Were you a volleyball? Were you a volleyball player in your youth? No. Try, try hard to remember now. I know that. Uh, I know the era where your knees were good enough for that is quite long ago now. <laughs> no comment. Got it. Ramanolo has a six now. 
It was an unfortunate time for this lane to be as rowdy as it is. Tombstone cleaning this wizard up. Oh my god, I'm dying. Nope. It doesn't make it, doesn't get to uh, hit his one there. Dusty just cutting the wave up here top. The uh, Luna is long gone at this point. It does have the most last hits, so there's that. We got a net worth chart here. Despite her very large amount of last hits, she is in fourth place overall for uh, net worth. Oh. You hate Eidolon's to see it. Eidolon's pretty strong. Maybe he just really hates Eidolon's. Maybe he just uh, used Black Hole for one frame and then realized he was dying. Stare into the abyss. Amanolo oh, acting... Giving it away. Yep. Acting scared as he should be. Honestly, even if Rubik wasn't charging then, it got given away when he charged past tower anyway. Even if uh, Rubik wasn't charging on that, if uh, Jug just like ran at that guy aggressively, you know? Supports doing mutual. Look at that. That's teamwork, baby. Uh, Rubik tried to snipe the regen rune. Did not, in fact, get it. Unfortunately for him, Ramanolo is back. He does have his ult. Oh. He's ready and, to use it. uh, Jug, yeah, is in a lot of danger here. He tries to spin through the, uh, Viper roll. Pro tip, that doesn't work. Uh, did you see that? The, Why did he get caught? <laughs> the, uh, he was trying to get rid of the ward there to make the tombstone basically invisible. Ice tries to get rid of it, and uh, doesn't actually make it, has to get out. Has to get out of town here. Oh, Joel sees him. <laughs> Joel sees him, courtesy of that, uh, <laughs> that random tombstone zombie! That's the only reason that's sad, and then he loses his courier. <laughs> Who would want in a fight? The answer is Lambert, because he's got friends here, but at least that was funny. So that was a bit hectic, to say the least. Overall, up oh, overall a four for three trade. The Radiant walking away with just two hundred more dollars off of that. Slambert is kind of dying to the stack of ancients, but he is going to get Every it eventually. Here counts. It's true. How many doll hairs do you have? Inspector. Bye bye. Oh, you're not gonna tell us your finances live on stream? That's crazy. Live on this non-live stream. Mechanism close to up on the uh, on the undying, which actually mean quite a lot in this game. A lot of these, a lot of their damage is either. Slow DOTs like the Viper Strike, and things that hit you in like two seconds like the Luna, which are very high alpha, but also unlikely to hit him in particular. Goodbye, Ice. Things that are unlikely to hit him in particular, so having the mech is uh, very strong in a situation like this allows him to turn it around. Allows him to get rid of the long DOTs, long wars of attrition, allows him to get rid of the, the Eclipse if it doesn't get the kill immediately. It's funny, you know, mech is better on both sides of the, uh, rip wizard. It's better on both sides of the damage chart, right? Like, the worst time is if you've got, like, damage that's a good amount that comes over a decently long period of time. That's pretty hard to time around. Or, you know, stun span. That's also pretty bad. Lambert, bad news, my friend. You are Luna into Juggernaut. You don't do anything when he's actually here. Everybody's looking at this, uh, this ice. Up, oh, good sentry. Lol. What about it? Sewer so Breaker tries to charge away, but uh, the Malefice is going to uh, get him, and they actually kind of wombo combo perfecto. I actually get body blocked by the Nygmites there, so they can't get him. Bro, what? 
Khan, El Wombo Combo Perfecto. Oh, a very awkward exchange there. Top tower is under attack. What? What do you mean he just killed DJ Curry's place? He's not even like there. Oh, he is. Never mind. I was looking. I, I was thinking Lion was not here. He was here. Do you think that that kill deserved an ah in all chat? Because he did just kind of walk into a bunch of people he knew where they were at. Should have been from mine. Oh my god! Oh my god! Damn! <laughs> oh my god! That's ice cold. That is ice cold, baby. Uh oh, Rubik takes the uh, the Viper strike. Immediately leads to it to death. Lambert, uh, Lambert, my friend. Those are not bouncing to the tombstone. Luna just melts in seconds. This is a 2v5, and the two are winning. Finger of Death comes out, immediately skill follow-up. Coffee Cat comes in for the typical anti-mage teamfight contribution. Five for one trade there. 2,327 gold passes into the hands of the Radiant. Dusty says call it. Call it, Geist. Has 8k now worth advantage for the radiant here. Juggernaut at the top of the net worth charts. Hello, Ramanolo. Just walks up to say hi to the Juggernaut, you know? It's, it's, it's not always... It's not always about the competition. It's not always about being a brute. You know, sometimes it's, it's nice to just give somebody a nice polite greeting. I cannot believe that black hole on the spear breaker. Talk about disrespect. Talk about a big ward there as well. That the, 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 the real MVP of this game is this ward that Undying put down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Joel takes bulldoze as he 1v1s. Okay, no, 1v2 is a spear breaker. I thought that was happening in the triangle. Uh, Lambert. Lambert, that doesn't do anything. Lambert, look at how nothing that... <laughs> what? Why did you pick this matchup? You had control of it. You could have said no. You had the perfect ability to not be in this matchup, my friend. Okay, that's the world's worst Eclipse in kind. One terrible Eclipse to use another, I guess. Juggernaut going way deep here. This will be an awesome idea if he had old, but sadly for him, he doesn't. Also, sadly for him, the Mantis style does not get rid of the Viper roll. Nice. Nothing does. Dusty coming into the back line, though, with, uh, with the Undying to get rid of the Luna here. And the Viper as well. Um, okay. So losing Jug was a pretty big deal here, but losing three Ford, including your Luna, did not make it feel like a great trade. Though... Okay, it's, it's not accounting for the lion. I was going to say, those three were almost as much as that one. Turns out those two were as much as that one, and lion was counted separately. T2 bot going down quick order here. Net worth lead passes over 10k. <laughs> Building the hell up out of his dagon here. Which, hey, just got buffed, right? Why not? Lion is finally giving, getting rid of this Observer Ward, which has caused this team so much hassle. Spirit Breaker was the most enticing juggled in the world there if it wasn't for that massive wave of creeps he was with. I'm gonna drop the bomb on Enigma here. They better be careful. They've used most of their uh, skills already. Okay, yeah, it's just starting to get really bad. Again, Sabo uh, doing a very good job contesting these wards that are uh, trying to just spot his tombstones. In that situation, it is just the better idea to just ignore everything else going on. Because if you can secure that area, not only have you knocked out one of their wards, those are in pretty valuable supply, you know. You've also just made your tombstone effectively invincible unless somebody, like, four staffs or blinks up there or something.
Dyer's Meanwhile, Lambert, Lambert is back here. supply. They haven't been using a lot this game. That's not true. Look, we're looking at an observer right now. One under a radiant sentry, but, you know, we're looking at an observer right now. They started off very strong in the first game. Yeah, that's true. The uh, vision game was definitely in, uh, there's another right now. The vision game was definitely in the favor of, uh, of Blade Fury Burgers in the first game for the most part. They did eventually bridge the gap, but it was the case for most of the game that the, uh, the vision game was in the opposite team's favor. This time, not so much, and Ice is dead. It feels like it takes so little to get rid of the Spear Breaker, which is not good. That's a mid-Spear Breaker, and they're just getting rid of him with a nasty thought. Lol. So funny, Lambert. You're not even... You're, you're, you're just sitting down here in the GG jungle eating popcorn. <laughs> he says chicken to your... Oh, no. Undying is bald. Dyer's courier has been killed. And dying is bold. Spirit Breaker's courier got killed by Tyne on its way to the secret down. shop. Radiant have a vague idea where Lambert is, but uh, slightly too late as he has since vacated the premises. And somebody has just drawn like a big Dyer's funny face. There's like the eyes, the nose, and a big smile. Or a big, like, neutral face. Blessings upon a loyal, Blessings upon a loyal warrior! Can you believe I do like that people? avalanche? Bonk. Can you believe that they make people who talk like helpless in real life? That's crazy. They made a whole country that's well not a whole country, a whole constituent country. That's a Shrek reference, it's crazy. Okay. Uh Lambert is talking about some Wombo Combo Perfecto and says, <laughs> Well, that's not very nice. <laughs> a slightly less than useful black hole here. What a surprise. Honestly, wasn't worth it. It's going to make going uphill a hell of a lot harder as a result. That was great. <laughs> At least Lambert's having a good time. He's also typing like he's drunk again. Lambert, quit hitting the sauce, bro. What would Mrs. Lambert say? <sighs> he's gone. I don't know. Have you ever interacted with Mrs. Lambert? I mean, you played on a team with a guy for an entire season, after all. No. Nope. That's a shame. Sean, are you okay? Have you? Con El Wombo Combo Perfecto. No, I've never even been on the same team as Lambert, to be honest with you. But I've never met Mrs. Lambert. She's just a mythical figure to me. Like the Tooth Fairy. Or, uh... Well, that wasn't it. The supports uh, probably shouldn't be doing 1v5s right about now. The only thing I've ever heard in the background was the dog. Oh, are you saying that there is no Mrs. Lambert? That he's making it up? <laughs> I think Mrs. Lambert is in Gotham's server, actually. See this happen. Maybe he's married to a husky? I don't know. He could be married to a husky, yeah. It's not very nice calling Mrs. Lambert husky like that. You're supposed to say plus size. Also, that's what you're supposed to do if you're kind of spear breaker. Write that down, Sean. Plus size? Is yeah, it like yeah. Thick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't but either way, you're not supposed to call her husky. I don't know that's just plus me. Size. <laughs> I like uh, I like it when Roche gets avalanche. He just looks like he's having a seizure. Yeah, he's dancing. Just bumps. There you go. I am the Juggernaut. I have picked up the Aegis. His death animation is like... 
just goes back into the ground. Yeah. We didn't want that and anyways! He died, and he's like, ah! It's true. Oh, it gets sucked back into the ground. It doesn't, like, fall over. Invoker has the best death animation in the whole game. He just gets so mad he explodes. Like the default Invoker, I guess I should say. Was he hoping that would get black hold? They didn't do that. Oh my god, they got drum boots on the Enigma. They got they got Helm of the Dominator on the Enigma, and it's apparently been used. Oh, here it is. Oh, look at that. Raise the dead, baby. Look at that. Use all your skills on the Juggernaut, baby. It's okay, it's not like that guy has Aegis or anything. DJ Curry Spice and Ice going down to the Tombstone and the, uh, in the Lighter's case as well, the, uh, the Omni Slash. Completely useless Eclipse. Gets absolutely nothing except, uh, Rubik a free Eclipse. <laughs> That's not very nice. Coffee Cat, like me, is in favor of a short game and just goes right for the throne. Yep. Yeah, it was very low risk in this strategy at the moment, considering everybody in the dire is dead. You can't find me, says Lambert. I can. You're right here. We literally see you. We just don't care. Oh my god. He's losing this 1v1. Oh my god! The Rubik Spear Breaker ult. Just for the average, just for the added funny. Lambert is so bored. Wizard says a very unfortunate set of letters. Wizard, <laughs> Wizard makes a typo that makes him turn from Wizard to Grand Wizard for just one second. And uh, both teams make the bracket. Despite uh, despite initial projections that uh, this could be bad for the wizard team, they are fine anyway. Spoilers. Yeah, that was just the tale of two shitties. Shitty drafts, that is. I mean, that was just... Game one, they definitely win with a better draft. Game one, they definitely win if they have Lambert not Ursa in an unimaginably bad Ursa game. But this game two... The execution definitely felt like a small part. Yeah. No, I think it was, it really was. Like, the Ursa just didn't do anything that everybody else wasn't already setting up for him. Switch out the Ursa, and you have a very, very strong chance to win that. Because, like, you know, Ice was owning. Wizard was owning. Curry Spirit and uh, Ramanola were there. Only Ramanola felt like he was really falling apart. The only problem is that they couldn't get anything done on the Ursa unless everybody else was already just setting it up for him. Stick him on anything else. Stick him, especially on the Basil's Void. Like, everybody on the other team in that game just dies in Chrono, right? And after BKB comes out, they can't really stop that fact anymore. This game, a lot harder to say. I feel like the draft on Blade Fury Burgers is is not just, like, down on one part. Like, Ramanolo first to pick Viper, like, no, you, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> you're just not allowed to first pick that hero at all. They didn't even really answer it all that well either, honestly. Like, it, this is not a super great anti-Viper lineup outside of the ability to uh, to throw the old back at him with a Rubik, but didn't even really end up mattering, it felt like. Just on the grounds, it's like the Spirit Breaker completely fell to pieces, had no role to play in this game besides die. Luna had no role to play in this game besides just hit creeps and, like, really was pretty much just a... Uh, wonder if it shows you on this. I know it shows you on... Uh, okay, it does show you. Only 539 gold, so it wasn't really that bad, I guess, but it was pretty much just a vessel to transfer money from his own team to the enemy team. Basically, just could do nothing in fights except drop a clips on nothing. His, his most important role in fights in this game was to give Rubik a clips. Like, that's what it really was, basically. I don't know. Major draft issues on the Wizard team. First game... Almost good. This game, disastrous. And I feel like... Any... He should have gotten the condo and 
the Luna. It's true. I feel like uh, pretty much any... Uh, looks like he was going for it. He has a crits. feels like yeah. pretty much any other discussion is almost secondary to that fact. Like, they just kind of... You know, in, in game one, they were even outplaying for a very large portion of the game, but because of the draft efficiency, that didn't matter. Game two, they were just getting stomped. Maybe it was a morale bust. I don't know. Maybe Lambert was just drunk. Certainly, though, this is Luna into Jug, and Jug had, like, a really good lane, too. Luna really didn't. I don't know. Felt bad. If you, anything to say before we get out of here? No. If you or somebody you know wants to learn Dota 2 at a casual or more competitive level, go to ld2l.gg today to sign up. It's too late to get into this season, surprisingly enough, but it's, uh, you know, there's probably not even going to be places or stand-ins on the bracket. We usually just use the uh, the players from the eliminated teams for that, sadly. But, in-house season, happening soon enough, queues are still popping everywhere you look, and season 18, probably not that far away. And who knows what kind of fun we'll be having during the house season. So, ld2l.gg, follow that Discord server link. That's where all the fun is happening. We'll see you next time for, I think, the one-game series?